So let's next have a look at uh, the model that we're going to, 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 to use. Uh, so the model has a consumer side, of course. So the consumer side will be uh, um, uh, described by the, um, well, uh, there's these two platforms. So take these to be symmetric, duopoly of platforms. And uh, platform A, uh, the first platform might be producing good A, so let's also call that platform A. So platform B will be producing good B, and it will charge prices, and we're going to assume that these prices cannot be negative. So you cannot get paid, essentially, for consuming the services from or the goods from these uh, from these platforms, which in, uh, in, in re reality is often, uh, often uh, a realistic assumption. And that's just for, for, uh, for ease of, of, of the exposition, assume that the costs of providing these services or these goods to consumers will be zero. So the cost of doing a search, if, if you wish, is going to be zero, the marginal cost. Um, so the uh, consumers will be described by, well, there's going to be a unit mass of consumers and what these consumers can do uh, so there's many consumers, but we just normalize them to, to one or a hundred percent, if you wish, uh, in total. What they can do is uh, they can buy none of these goods. So they don't have to buy zero. Or they might buy one good, so either good A or good B. Or they might buy, if they'd like, so, like to, buy both goods, so buy both A and B. So we'll do, they'll do, of course, whichever is going to maximize their utility given the prices P, A and P, B that they are going to be uh, observing. So the utility is described by well, something which is called Pearl of Salop type utility. Uh, so the idea here is that you know, if they buy one good, uh, so if they only buy good A in particular, then the utility for consumer will be some value that they uh, derive from getting this, this good or service A. So it's going to be called VA, and they're going to pay the price PA for that uh, for that good, so the net utility is going to be VA minus PA, and the, the point here is that this VA is not a, a single, you know, if there was just a single consumer, it would be one, one VA, but if there's many consumers, well, some will have high utility V, and some will have low utility VA, and in general, these Vs for this product A over all consumers will be distributed according to some distribution, so this that's what this, this letter thing here means is VA will be distributed according to this this um, distribution big F of V. So it might be for instance be the uniform distribution that so there might be an example. So where all V's will between will be between say zero and one if you wish with equal likelihood but might also be different uh, distribution. So same thing for B so the good utility that consumers derive from Consuming good B will be some VB, and they will pay the net. The net utility will be that minus the price that they're paying PB, price that this platform B is charging for that good. And again, this VB is going to distrib be distributed according to some distribution. They're actually going to look at symmetric, the symmetric case where these two distributions are the same. Or they are, that is to say, they are independent, but they are the same distribution. So your draw from the first distribution will be an independent from your draw from the second distribution but those two distributions that you're drawing from are going to be the same and then of course you might also buy both goods and particularly you will buy those two goods if they are independent so if they're independent well the uh, and if your uh, utility from buying those of course is going to be positive so if they are independent goods you uh, like say search and uh, and buying something on the internet, for instance. Um, um, if they are um, independent, then you might just add up the two utilities, basically the VA minus PA plus the VB minus PB, and that's going to be your total utility from consuming both goods. So if that's positive, uh, if both are positive, essentially, then you might be you will be willing to buy both goods provided these goods are independent. The other, uh, the alternative here is that these two goods are substitutes. So if you already have one of those, well, then there's going to be uh, not much, uh, in particular, if you're buying the one which has the higher VA or VB, then there will be no use for you also buying the other product because it's just going to be a substitute. So confronted with these two products, you'll buy at most one in particular the one that gives you most utility, so either UA or UB 
whichever is biggest. And if both are negative because your v, both your VA and your VB happen to be rather small, then you will, of course, buy nothing. So what it looks like is, you know, if these two goods are independent, so you know, this square basically represents the, all these, these, this unit of the unit mass of consumers, so the 100% of consumers are distributed, you know, say, for instance, even if this, this is a uniform distribution, even the, across this square, so, so this square measures basically the, uh, the, 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 the benefits, the willingness to pay, if you wish, that each consumer has uh, over these two goods. So the further a consumer would be to the right in this square, the higher its evaluation would be VA for product A, and the further to the top of the square a consumer sits, the higher its willingness to pay or its valuation over product from uh, seller B. And so in particular, those who are sort of in this big square over here, the one labeled AB will have fairly high valuation both for A and for B, while well, these two products are independent products. So as long as this, their VA and their VB are above the price PA and the price, PB charged by these companies, they will be inclined to buy both goods. So those will be so the, the people who sit in this square who end up randomly essentially being allocated to this square in the total distribution of consumers. They will be the ones who will be buying both goods A and B. So those who have high willingness to pay B but low willingness to pay A will end up, of course, in this rectangle here, labeled B and vice versa for the rectangle A, and those who have small VA and small VB, so both VB smaller than PB, so lower than this side, and uh, VA smaller than PA, so in, the, in this horizontal area, basically, those will be the consumers who end up buying nothing in this independent products market. So that's for independent products, so we'll also be interested in substitutes. So if these two goods happen to be substitutes, as a consumer, you will never want to buy both goods because you will only consume one, well, the one which gives you the largest utility. So you will only buy that particular uh, good, if any. So well, what does that amount to? Well, all those goods for which consumers have higher utility VA than VB will be those basically uh, in this area called labeled A, or those for who VB is going to be larger than VA will be those uh, in area B, and of course those who have utilities VA and VB, which are both smaller than the prices for these respective goods, they will actually have negative utility from buying anything at all, so they will not buy anything. So the outside utility from being inactive, not buying anything at all, is just going to be zero. So they are in this particular square in this case, over here. So that's what uh, the picture, basically the same picture, but now for substitute goods is going to look like. So it's going to depend you know, how large the uh, the numbers of, of consumers will be depending on your price, of course, but also depending on whether goods are substitutes or are independent from each other. So then, of course, you know, there was the consumption side, and of course, there's also the advertising side of this market. So these platforms have, you know, they will attract some consumers buying their services. Uh, and if these consumers are single homers, so they are only going to buy uh, goods from your platform, but not from the other platform, then you will be able to ask a high price from these advertisers and ask per consumers actually a profit, uh, which we call buy single. So this is essentially the monopoly profits that you can extract from advertisers from uh, being the gatekeeper to these particular single home consumers. On the other hand, if particular consumers are uh, multi-homing, so they're buying both good A and good B, then any advertiser uh, will have actually a choice of buying from you or from your rival because they can reach these consumers either by, um, by, by you or by your rival. And then there will be, of course, competition in the advertising market, and that's going to reduce your profits that you can extract from these from these advertisers. So the lower profits that you can extract from a for giving access to the multi homes, that's going to be called buy multi here. 
per consumer, obviously. So if there's Bertrand competition, pure price competition on this side of the market, so on the advertising side of the market, selling off data or selling off advertising slots, typically what you can do as a platform is you can only extract the incremental value that you would bring you know, if this advertiser is also already dealing with your rival. So that would be, uh, so if you can add some additional uh, value to a, um, to an advertiser, for instance, for giving a second impression of their ads to the same consumer, well, then that's what you can charge them for, but not for the for the single home revenues. So the excess of the single home rents, the higher by single, versus what you can get for multi-home consumers by multi, we're going to call that R, and that's going to be an important parameter. So these are the excess or the monopoly excess rents that you can extract for single homers over multi-homers. And to make life easier, let's just assume that actually the pi multi is actually going to be zero. So only the first impression is going to, to have any value if you wish. Uh, but if you are uh, competing over providing that value, well, you're competing all the way down to zero as in Bertrand competition. Uh, so there's no rent to be had from the adver advertising side. Uh, and what we're going to assume uh, in addition for simplicity here is that uh, that uh, consumers, again, uh, get no disutility from advertising. So they don't mind having advertising on the website that they are visiting. So that's, of course, that can be relaxed, but that doesn't offer in this, for this particular uh, analysis, it won't offer much uh, further insight. So let's see the model that we're going to use. So we're going to look at this model uh, where firms can have either can be either substitutes or independent uh, good producers, um, uh, or rather products can be rather independent or, or can be substitutes. And we have these consumers um, and the right of access to these consumers that can be sold to uh, to advertisers either. Against these monopoly rents are, or uh, if they are competing, if they're multi homing, then there will be no additional rents from the advertising sector. So, the next thing that we'll have a look at is uh, various applications of this model. And first, we're going to have a look at you know, if these platforms can choose the types of products that they are offering. In particular, they can choose whether they want to provide goods or products, services which are. Um, Close substitutes or services which are independent, so which consumers might like might like to buy uh, both. Uh, so how is that going to be? That choice is going to be influenced by the by the size essentially of these advertising monopoly rents are. And then we will have a look at that, the application of mergers. So if you can choose whom to merge with, would you like to merge with a close competitor who's providing a substitute of your good, or would you like to merge um, essentially go into a conglomerate merger so merge with some other firm which is producing something entirely different uh, and finally we'll have a look at tying so tying as in the in the android example for instance that we uh, that we saw before or also in the uh, in the microsoft example from the early uh, 2000 that we discussed uh, earlier uh, and we have a look at you know how that interacts with this particular model so that's the topic of the next video